Uh, yeah, it's one of those maps where realistically they haven't looked particularly good, but I can't say either team did. Like, Tiger banging out Zigma is not going to really sway my decision on that either because realistically they also lost to Checkmate as well. So, and they had a game versus after that they did all right, but it wasn't particularly impressive and after and not one of the better teams within the tournament. So, I, I think this is definitely going to be a close one. I think it could go either way. The thing for me is mainly whether or not Viva performs. I, I think if he steps up like he did, at least in aspects on the last map, they have a good opportunity here. If not, that B site becomes a, a severe vulnerability for them. Yeah, I'm 100% with you. As you're seeing on the computer screen over there, there's not a whole lot going on. That's because the knife round has just ended. And of course, we're going to see Invictus winning that, taking the CT side as a start, putting Tiger on the back foot, I suppose, in a way. Although based on what we've seen from this region, sometimes it's better to be on the T side, certainly in terms of picking up those rounds. Invictus come into this one, CT side Infernal, with a kit on Destroyer, and everybody else just taking the, oh no, they're going for double kits. So we've actually seen this from them a couple of times, and it surprises me every single one. We saw Flying do this on Mirage, where he took the second kit alongside Utility to play for the retake over, uh, actually, I don't think they had a second kit. I think it was one kit. And he had uh, an extra set of utility. He had like a smoke to play with. So I I'm surprised. It's very, very rare you see two, two kits. Two kits, no smoke. Mm hmm. Very rare. I don't like this at all. Yeah, I, I think two kits is basically just a waste of money because I, I feel like unless one of your players with the kit is playing very aggressive or the player with the kit is playing aggressive, it, it should never happen that that's really needed. But um, hey, you never know. Maybe we'll see one kit dropped and it could work out for them. The thing that bugs me a bit, though, is like I feel like a smoke, especially if it's going to be a B-site retake, is so valuable. You can just section off banana, make the retake far more possible. Instead, they're going to have to try and flash through the smokes, which uh, a much more Asian style of play. That's actually exactly what they're going to do. And um, good. I'm, I'm glad that happened. I'm going, oh, <laughs> Dobu, a little bit too quick on the trigger finger. He's going to take down NCO instead, and he's given Xiao Sage a chance. Good work from him, at least, to stay alive that long and get a kill at the back of the site he's bought some time the smoke has faded and flying's made his way back around the corner left into a two versus two and the bomb in that position can't be planted and bottle's actually going to wrap around and find the pick nice shot from nine but they should know that he needs to cross back over you don't really need to fight this one flying he has to go and get that bomb but it doesn't matter he'll hit the headshots anyway good round from him good round from Xiao Sage as well um other than that though the double kit and flashbangs didn't really do anything yeah, the flash that came down towards the B site was coming in a little bit early. And overall, a pretty weird uh, turn of events. But look, Invictus take the pistol. And what's most important is that they stop that bomb from being planted. So without a whole lot of money to play off of Tiger's investment, which they're still going for, sees a lot of pistols. In fact, exclusively pistols and Tech Nines for the most part, which we don't see every day. What I hate about this, though, Tom, is the five SMGs. And it's something that I'll always talk about and I'll always hate. I feel like getting rifles is important on most maps, on pretty much every map. But Inferno, I'll give a little bit more leeway. What I will give as a caveat, though, is you do not want to be losing players. In a round like this, if you find a couple of kills and uh, lose one player, maybe, it's going to be all right. Because, obviously, you've got an eco coming up from the T side, presuming the CTs win this. But anything more than that, even with a round win, is going to cripple their economy on a couple of players, which in the long term can have... Some pretty big impacts coming into round number three or four. Round, round number four. Well, considering there's a buy on the other side, they, they will get a, an added bonus oh, round no. if they win. That's the thing. If they win and it's not going well for them at all, Dobu, NCL, found open as the smoke falling, but Stride does manage to kill before it looms, but it doesn't matter. Nine has managed to headshot through the smoke. Not the hardest thing in the world because of the tracers coming back through. Made an educated guess. But now for the remaining CTs, well, they've got no range. They have to try and get into this site. And realistically, Mitch, this is looking like a huge reset for the side of Invictus. Well, there you go. Tiger, they come in, they smash. And it's disappointing, Tom. 
It really is. You see, the other side of things that I, I didn't get time to mention, because I could sit here all day. I really could and talk about why I don't like five SMGs. But in terms of raw firepower, and you can see it in this duel right here, the Tech 9 ain't that far behind. If you're hitting hitting that opening headshot, and they are as well, matter of fact, you're ahead, because they've got full armor as well. So those Tech 9s do a lot. Uh, obviously, even if you put P250s in their shoes, as long as you get up close like that banana rush, and look, there's plenty of opportunities no matter where you go in Inferno, you're going to find yourself uh, coming ahead by quite a bit. Now, Tiger come into this round with four SMGs. Obviously, a lot of these saved over. What I want to highlight and why this isn't as much of a problem if you're on the T side, take a look at the previous round. First guy up close on tree. Bad decision in the first place, but he gets shut down. Second player, a car shut down again. You'll notice that at any point, there's not five CTs in one place, right? Because you can't quite do that when you're covering two bomb sites. T side, though, you can use all of these SMGs at once. You can rush down these deagles and find yourself in a much better position. So I really don't mind even second round four SMGs, five SMGs, possibly, maybe for the T side. I can see it as viable. But I don't quite see it the same way around when you're on the CT side. Well, Jao Sagi is going to whiff his initial shots, and that will be enough for the bomb site to fall. I think the biggest thing, though, with with the but that SMG buy, at least in my eyes, I I am not actually against it. I think it's more just the idea of how you play the round. And I think that's always got to be the case because you could have two teams have identical strategy or identical bias, sorry, and the strategy be different. And that's what makes the round successful. I don't like the fact that in that round, they solo take banana. I think if you're going to do it with SMGs, you should both be there, like take the control together, have a crossfire. I think you should use your utility better. You need to make sure you do damage with it. So uh, I don't necessarily have a problem with the, the SMGs, although I, I do think you should have one or two rifles ideally. Yeah. The thing I have more of a problem with is that they didn't do anything with it. They just went, okay, we're just going to set sure. one player up at the bottom of Banana and the rest will just fight at range. And that's what's silly about that whole situation is you've gone for an audacious buy and then you've made the decision not to do anything special. And I, I think uh -huh. that's where I, I draw the line is that you've then gone and tried to play it like a normal round. Because in that situation where it's an SMG down Banana and you have a rifle at the top, trading's very easy. So it, it's like you've just tried to play your normal setup with worse guns i completely agree with you if you have a rifle on car makes the world a difference in that setup but yeah the fact even the fact that they played down on tree in the first place is a very odd decision because up against those pistols like okay they might have ecoed but even if they did do you want to play that angle versus five glocks potentially probably not and you've no escape all right maybe it works out well one guy pushes you two guys push you and you get free kills but you can't get out of there for free. You're going to have to smoke it and hope they don't rush you down. It just seems like you're relying too much on them not doing something that completely wrecks you, giving them too many opportunities to do so. I like this push-up from Tiger, actually. So they use that smoke to try and block off the close corner and anybody may be peeking with something like a scout, although obviously they know it's probably going to be an eco. It allows them to isolate angles one at a time as they push through, and that's the most important part. And it is just one player pushing in Urcast with the SMG, he finds out that the close angles are all clear. He's suspicious. He finds, excuse me, finds Xiao Sage hiding in the back of church, praying that he was going to be left completely alone. And in this situation, if you're Viva, I would rather just to save to come through. That's just, there's no need to even throw that smoke. I would much rather him just run and save and save the smoke too. Have it all to play with in the next round. Because an SMG and a smoke it might be a small thing, but it, it certainly will serve you a lot better than like a, a sub 10 HP push into SMGs and giving free money to your opposition. It's a very small detail, Tom, but it's those little things that can really, that can be the difference between them having one extra grenade in a round where you put them on a weaker buy and that grenade could land and do 50 damage, which could allow an SMG kill, which could allow a rifle. Now, obviously we're talking butterfly effect there, right? Across the Atlantic, but it can happen. And I don't see why you would take the risk of, of introducing those kind of variables, uh, especially with the cost that comes along with it. Well, we will now see this bonus round, or somewhat bonus round. You know, a few weapons actually being juggled across. 
Uh, there's still enough for Nine Dobu and NCL to bail out the rest of the team in the next round if they do need it. Galsage eventually is going to be... Oh, it seemed like he was being set up alone, but... I'm going to go back to just jump peeking. It allows Viva to make more of a rotation. I think this is definitely the smarter of the two setups, although I imagine this will trade. Bear in mind, though, Mitch, at this point in the round, about 50 seconds gone, they have one flashbang, no kits, and... It is not looking like a good position. And I, I guess and a couple of the players have bought head armor purely based off the fact that there are going to be SMGs and there was a high chance of a rush at Banana. So it's actually the B players that have had to drop that extra utility. And now that that position has been given up, I think this rotation should have come back sooner. I don't know if the communication was a little bit slow, but I don't know if Viva is actually going to be here in time. The flashbangs over the top. They're actually going to go straight in. Viva does some damage across, but it's only a one-for-one -one trade, which for the SMGs is absolutely fine. Now that boost is going to be coming into play. They're not ready for it. Bottle actually gets away with two kills. The CT side have made something of this round. The bombs yet to be planted. They've got 15 seconds to try and make a play here. Urkus decides he wants to be the hero. Cabal, well, I'm not sure what the plan is. Just needs to try and get some damage across, but instead he will fall. Invictus... A little bit lucky, but a nice boost does pull off a huge round for them. And now, of course, this is where the bonus round, well, it may not have worked here, but they have a proper investment to back it up now. now overall, I have to say I'm, uh, I'm quietly confident about the Tiger lineup on this T side from what we've seen so far. I think that... Having that 3-2 to two lead is a comfortable spot. And there were some questionable decisions by the Invictus side. And honestly, for 3-2, to two, I think they've got to be pretty happy with where they're at over on Invictus, keeping it close this early on. That round was a real heaven sent. If they win this, they'll still face a full buy. And, and that is the problem with how the early rounds were set up for them, uh, how they've ended up in this position where Tiger have farmed so much money at so little cost. But at least they're on the road to correcting things. And with all the AKs saved through, it makes it that little bit easier. I like the approach. One man just solo spotting. Viva has to be very careful on Banana, but Bottle, he is taken down on top mid. That is a heavy loss for them to take. Especially because Tiger weren't doing anything there, right? It's not like the CTs have gotten some great information off the back of that. And this is going to be a heavily sold fake. Utility going over towards the A site. Some presence being made by Cabal. Flashes going over short. And then they're going to just go up Banana. At least that's what it was looking like. And Invictus thinks so too. With a rotate coming in from Destroyer. This is a double fake and I love it, Tom. They execute A. Then they just hold off. Make it look like it was a fake. And then they're going to burst into a weaker defense. Very smart. Yeah, it's taken too long also for Invictus to realize that this is the case. They've thrown the smoke down, the rotation started, but the push has already made its way in. Xiao Sage, right place, flying. He's holding the line. He manages two kills and gives his rotating teammates a chance. Shreya trying to spam a bit through the smoke. But the problem now is the lack of utility. Both sides, in fact, left with just a single flashbang. He's desperately trying to hold on and cover all the different angles. The flash over the top achieves very little, but nine. That is a complete miss of a spray. He's given an opener in here. Needs to try and rectify it and does well. About the same amount of damage to either player. Not quite what they were hoping for in Invictus again. It's a very close round and it took a double kill from one player to bring it back. It's going to leave things three to three. And I, I, I think they're still playing a, a little bit panicked. In, in these situations. If you look at, for example, Bottle's Peak, I think that was a desperation peak to look for information. I, I genuinely don't know why you would just wide peek into middle. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there was any sort of flash or anything to try and set him up or even give him a way out. It was just, if there's someone there, I'm dead. If there isn't, well, we know that there's nobody in mid. Yeah. Yeah. 100% yeah. on board with that now. I think for Invictus... Whoops. For Invictus, the position that they've ended up in, you know, that round really went down the drain. They were in a 2-2 split. They had been sold a fake. The rotate that they started towards A after realizing they'd been juked was way too late. They came out on top due to some massive brilliance on their part. 
Individual press will get you so far. Evil wants to nade this. He'll actually land that right onto nine if he just chokes it down now. But hasn't got any way to know that. Flash over, nade down. Not quite going to land. Players already left the ramp as they look to move up. And that flash has done exactly what was what it was intended to, Tom. It's, uh, it's pulled the players off the angle to allow... So first of all, it's blinded them, which allowed them to cross up from T-Ramp safely. But it has a tertiary purpose, which is that it pulls the players out of Banana. And actually, even further than that, it caused a rotate. Bottle went over towards the B site. Now that one you can't really predict. But the problem is, they've kind of read that now. They've realized that this isn't actually going to be a B hit. Shousage pushed down Banana. He found a kill, and he backs off. Meanwhile, the rotates have already come through to allow a four-man A stack. Now, two of those players are blocked out by utility. The smoke's completely blinding them. Boom! Oh, flying. He found an angle between the mollies that he can stay alive on, stay untouched, and find a kill to shut down this tiger push. I don't see them getting away with this, but Urkast and NCL, they're getting it done. Destroyer luckily able to catch one off, but NCL now knows what's going on, has no idea where this final player is. No, he missed the jump. Oh no, an eight HP Shao Sage finds that round, Tom. That looked like it was gonna be tigers after that massive performance on the site. Yeah, that, that was ridiculously close, but at the same time, those pit players did a fantastic job. I think you can see, like, this was something I was going to mention going into this map as well, is that flying on this map is a menace. Like, he's just really awkward to clear. He survives for longer than he ever should. And it's clear that in this situation, Tiger just wanted rid of him. They, they double molotov into the pit, but unfortunately, it didn't quite clear the back angles. I think a better strategy might be something of just, like, throwing in a couple of HEs. We, thought that, we saw that... Uh, previously used against him. Just uh, a couple of nades thrown in every round just to try and kill him off because he plays the same angle every round. I can't remember which team actually did that against them. I think that might have been one of the, the map plots. Was that, was that Checkmate? Mm, yeah, Checkmate won that map. I think that was Checkmate who was doing that. Where mm. we, we saw like triple nades thrown into flying because he just played pit every round. And we sort of jokingly spoke about the one yeah. round he played mini pit he won. And then he went back to pit again and they naded him again. So I would like to see something like that. Like if he's going to play a similar position most rounds. This round, there's already been a couple of kills off the back of the Deagles. Nine has managed to retrieve himself and oh. AK's looking over the edge of the smoke. Beaver, this is risky. He's been flashed through. It's not really necessary, but he gets away with one. Not really a worthwhile trade, but the bomb has to be retrieved. And now Bottle is going to do the same thing, isn't he? He's just waiting in it. They know at this point it's too predictable from Invictus. If you do the same thing again and again, eventually your opponents are going to realize while flying is now the only one left. He's done well while sitting in the pit. Can he do anything in the retank? Well, I guess there is a little pit from to play off of here if they peek into him. But the shots are not baiting out the peaks that he wants them to. There's one. And he had an idea. Oh my God. Flying so smart, so good, and a 3k to get a fifth round for Invictus. That has shaken me out of my skin, Tom. <laughs> oh my god, that was gorgeous. Well, the man for sure has his moments. And and, and this is a map where normally we, we see a lot more comfort from oh. him, but this was just so clean. Oh. Clinical stuff. You do have to look at the two players from Tiger and go, okay, how do you lose that one? But even still, the CTs aren't going to mind. They've gained their fifth. Tiger, so much money in the bank that they're going to be buying for this round and the next, no matter what happens. Destroyer is going to be back on his AWP. Like he might take the peek into middle. For now, it's a bit more of a passive angle, but Banana being challenged once again. I think that has to be the play. Like, although... They weren't successful in the last round. They did gain the B-site control fairly easy. Like, they lose the 1v2, but, well, that happens sometimes. I don't want to see Tiger continuing to play into this A-site because from what we've seen so far, the A-site has been better. This round, though, Destroyer on an AWP, who hasn't been great so far, and flying with only an MP9, it's probably the right decision. Well, this 
destroyer. He's taken down Urkast to start it off. He's gotten away alive as well, flying. Oh, this is an awkward fight. <laughs> Cabal and flying spraying away on different angles, but eventually it connects to flying nine. Struggling to find that kill what up is close. Going on? Viva was seven HP, and I think he just dodged like 30 bullets. Man is in the matrix. That was an odd round, Tom. <laughs> Not when yeah, you see fire like, all the time. I feel like at this point, Tiger should be winning. <laughs> like it, it, it's the last two rounds have been ones that I don't really understand how they lose. They push into a site with two men on it, and somehow Destroyer manages to survive without getting overwhelmed for a very long time. It takes them ages to kill off Flying. And even though he didn't get a kill, he did enough just with staying alive. And then by that point, Viva's rotated in and they completely whiff on him as well. Like, this is not what we want to be seeing from Tiger, even just on an individual basis, because the fact is they land the shots there and that's a very easy round. Instead, a few whiffs here and there and oh, Victors have a stronger lead. They've got better weaponry going into this one, I'd assume. I can see an AK for Zhao Sage. I imagine the bottle also has a rifle on the floor, considering how much money is remaining. Oh, the fact is, things are only going to get tougher for the side of Tiger from here on out. And, oh, other than their B-side presence, I, th that's the thing. I, I think this is just evidence that they should be pressuring B. Like, you just struggle to take it versus two players. With B, you've been able to take it versus three. Yep. I think you can see there's a... A little bit of preference for banana control at least to start things off. Both players jump up at the same time. But it's Urkast that comes out the king of the logs. As he forces Shao Sange to pull back over towards the B site. That is banana control going to Tiger straight away in this round. And a good position to play from. They just need to be very careful. Not to give away these advantages like they have in the past a couple of times. Oh, oh, yes. There we go. Exactly what we talked about. Literally, word for word, what you said, what, two rounds ago? Flying, he plays there. It's so predictable. We saw versus checkmate. He got naded to death. Well, there you go. Triple nades on him to take him out. And again, reinforce the point that Invictus are just that little bit too predictable sometimes. Uh, the last two players don't really have a choice but to try and just save what they can their money is not going to be in the best of states going into the next round even though they have managed to win what five rounds in a row i think yeah they won the pistol lost the second and that was it until now so five rounds in a row and still having no cash it does show that a lot of these rounds have been ridiculously close and in fact in the majority of them they've actually had the weaker of the buys with bombs going down in i think three of the last four rounds but now though we have to see what they're actually going to be able to invest into the next one. With the minimum amount of loss bonus, you're only going to see 2,400, 3,600, even 1,800 on Viva. So I, I question whether or not they're actually going to risk a purchase here. I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest, if they do just go in for... Uh, nothing really alongside those rifles and the other that's what's going to come in you just got a CZ for bottle and everybody else is taking the eco a nade for flying he's seen the power of the nades in the previous round I wonder if he's going to go to pit I would hope not oh is he going to pit is he really going to pit oh, he's playing a little yeah, bit a more yeah, he's, he's in front of it for now. Lining up the nade, which, if the timing's right, could actually do a decent amount of damage. That is unfortunate. <laughs> they just went back into boiler as he does it. Uh, I felt bad. And now he's in the pit again. So chances are they're going to be ready for this. There's a nade onto him yet again. They only oh, had the one, so okay. couldn't take him down with it. He's going to look for a little, but the molly takes him out this time. That's utility kills two times in a row now. But the CZ on site hasn't been spawned, and molly is perfect. If, oh, no, bottle. He's whiffed it. He's bottled it. He's going to look for a kill, but he can't find anything. That's such, such an unfortunate situation. He could have had Cabal, but he bottled it. 
Is that a phrase in the UK, Tom? People say yeah. that? Yeah. Okay, good. You did say it twice in the space of 30 seconds, though. Yeah. <laughs> He's bottled it. Uh, it's a I feel like there's plenty more bottle base puns that could be brought out. We failed to put a cap Especially on them. Especially if you, if you started mentioning things that were in bottles. It'd be whining and dining. We're getting obscure with the references. I like it. Eva. We love his deagle play, but this time he will be expected by NCL. Destroyer as well. Running down mid. <laughs> Flying doesn't even bother peeking the angle. We'll just take him down through the wall. And with their economy slowly improving over the last few rounds with the Ecos. He probably could look to try and do a bit of damage here, but I'd much rather see him have an AK for when he gets naded out of pit. You know what? Flying might be on the CT side, but it's Tigers that are soaring, that are flying. It feels like there's not a star in heaven that they can't reach. And if they're trying, then they might just be able to break it free over towards B. Okay, then. And a high school musical boy. I don't think that phrase has really been uttered too much. <laughs> I don't think I don't, I don't think they saw me and were like, yeah, you know what? That's the target audience for this film. You don't reckon? No. You I it. do love Zac Efron. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, let's uh let's stop going off topic. Let's <laughs> stick to the status quo. I can't I I genuinely don't know if that's a song. It, see that's the thing. I don't know if it is or not. Just have have a you, listen to it real quick. You lost me with the uh Miley Cyrus lyrics after a point and you've definitely lost me with this. <laughs> Well, look at the end but of the But you know, day. you know, knowing Blair and his heavy metal background, I'm sure he's all for the high school musical references. Probably. But I mean, look, at the end of the day, regardless of probability, you can bet that there's nothing but net when Tiger are in the zone and on a roll. But I bet they've got a confession to make, their own secret obsession, and it's making them lose control. And it's over towards the B site that I'm seeing it. Banana has been so easy for them to take. They've gotten in here every single round that they've tried it. it. It takes a flash. That's all. And boom, the CTs are running away. And I think for Tiger, they've realized that. Because at this point, they threw their flash start of the round. They just moseyed on up and went, well, no one's here. NCL cleared that out and saved them a lot of utility in having to pressure off that angle. Now, once again, they're going to try and put the pressure on this B site. All of it seems to rely on Jasage, who's... Wow. Just going to try and spam through the smoke. Bottle is now here. They've actually switched things up. They've moved Viva away. I can kind of understand why it really wasn't working, but this hasn't gone any better. I'm not going to blame Bottle in that situation, though. His teammate pretty much sawed himself down the river within a couple of seconds. And yeah, Tiger, again, they're, they're building into this half. It was a, a bit of a, a slow start, even after the sort of forced by victory after the pistol with five in a row coming up for the CT side. But it, it always felt like this sort of streak was coming for them because they were letting rounds slip away that they shouldn't, like miss shots on players that were very low on HP, even losing to an MP9 at times. Like the economy of Invictus never really got built up. Not because of it. They're just having to save here. Will be a, a four man save on the T side as well, so their money is pretty much set for the end of the half. And if they go into the second with a 9 6, they're definitely in the driver's seat here. Vroom, vroom. That's all I'm adding. It's, you, you can take it away. No, but uh, so, for Tiger, in the position they're in, yeah, 100%. They've, they've got the, the clutch in their hands, and they're working it. Just like Dinko when he's drifting around those streets. You strike you as a drifter. 
Not particularly. No boot. Ooh, like it. it's going to get caught out. Tries to get the spam through the wall. Fever, aggressive on Banana. It seems he's had enough. Tries to rewrite the script, unfortunately. They've turned the page and head their way into the A site, although NCL's running without a gun in hand. It's not advised. Bottle has managed to buy time. No, the safer bet would just be to stay passive here, but instead he tries to aggress around the smoke, leaves himself open. And sure, he bought time for the rotation to come in, but he didn't buy time for any space to be taken. Smoke down. Jalsagi looks for a gap, but there isn't one this time. And it looks like instead they're going to try and boost up oh, fever. Oh, dear. That is a curse that can't be unwritten. He's just been caught. His teammate trying to line up something special and instead just had to watch him die before his eyes. It leaves a 1v2 for Zhao Sagi and he spent the majority of this round behind a smoke. I feel like eventually he's going to have to try and make a play through it because the time is just ticking away. Either that or just opt to save. You've got 15 seconds now. That's the amount of time that both of those smokes wasted and in the end, well, the time he survived after they were gone was not long at all. It seems like there's some sort of a curse here. Uh, we don't have banks, but it looks like the curse has followed us. Because on the first map, we saw it for Tiger, and now we're seeing it here for Invictus, that it's like they're in a, a traditional single-engine aircraft, propeller-based. And they're, they're on a vertical incline. They're flying up towards the sky. But Tom, I don't know how much you know about planes, but in that kind of aircraft, you're going to hit a stall. You can only go so high in a straight line before you run out of speed. It's gravity stronger than the pull of that engine. And you're going to start falling on down. And we have seen that again and again. To the point that I'm not even surprised that they just tried to straight run down Banana. And ran into three players who were just playing off the edge of the smoke. This has been one hell of a turnaround by Tiger. Pulling themselves back into a spot. Oh no! That got close! The damage done to Dobu, he even takes a step back after throwing that nade, thinking, ooh, <laughs> a little bit of splash damage here is going to kill me. I'm surprised they're not watching for that at this point. That seems to be the game plan from Invictus, is if at first you don't succeed, run through a smoke. It's not how the, uh, the saying normally goes, but unfortunately, I, I guess it got translated wrong. It's something they're doing just doesn't make any sense. Dobu... Oh, as long as he doesn't step up, this is going to be okay. Timing could be a bit of an issue. Flying's been spotted, though, and he's not going to expect the second player to be here. A bait and switch, but Destroyer's found one. He needs the instant headshot, and it isn't to be found. 9-6 in favor of Tiger. A strong T side coming out from them. And now they just need to finish the job on the CT side. That's seven rounds in a row. Absolutely unbelievable. No, wait. Six rounds in a row, right? Yeah, six rounds in a row. I had to recheck the scoreboard there. But that that's unreal by Tiger. To come back into a spot where they just look so dominant, and considering some of these rounds were quite close, they had those very flat performances, like the push-out in towards the, the A site versus just two players, and they couldn't get it done. We always have opinions, Tom, on which team's going to win a game, and I feel like mine has changed about 15 times across the course of this map. Yeah, I'll have to say the, the fence is starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. But <laughs> it, it, it's, it, That's the thing. It's one of those, neither of these teams have played amazingly well. I think Tiger have been better and probably should have 2-0'd this. Instead, it's ended up on a three-map series and... I don't know if it necessarily deserved to, as Invictus have had their problems. I guess there's been a few saving graces here and there, like an okay performance from Jao Sage. This is a big risk, though. This is a full stack of the A site, leaving just Urkist here, and all he can do is fade away. They're going to play for the retake. They've got two smokes, a flashbang, and a kit, so they're prepared at least, and he hasn't used any of his utility. This is why I sort of talk about a smoke being integral. So he's going to line this up. To try and section off banana the problem is i don't think they're going to expect this many players to be in ruins all their plans have been ruined
by this strategy and now Arcus, well, he was lining up a smoke and unfortunately all of his teammates are dead. It is just him alone and Viva comes wide, straight, jumping around a corner. It is a seventh round for Invictus. I believe it's the second time now they've won the pistol. Question is, will they convert it this time, Mitch? Tom, do you ever see those, um... What do you guys call them? Squash, I think you call it, right? A dilutable drink. Yeah. Concentrate. Yeah. Um, you ever see those tiny little pocket ones that you just squirt into a bottle of water or whatever? I think I know what you mean. I've never yeah. bought them, but I know what you mean. Yeah, so my mom gave me some, and I just had them up here, and I was thirsty. I wanted to you know, have some, but my water was slightly out of arm's reach, and I figured, screw it. Just, just squirt a tiny bit. Oh my god, it's so concentrated. It's unbelievable. I've just spent that whole round just wincing from how sour that well, was. Well, you just drank it straight. Well, I did like a tiny little, like a, the tiniest amount. And it was, it's so strong. Obviously, because it's like a well, full bottle in a tiny little point. thing. <laughs> yeah. So, don't do that. If you... I know no one would, but don't do that. That was horrible. It tasted nice, but it was very sour. You do that with other things you're supposed to add water, like eat pasta straight out of the packet. <laughs> Dude, that's that's actually all right. You know the long long strings of pasta? As a kid, I used to always just like grab a handful and just, you know, one at a time. Lot. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. The spaghetti, well, spaghetti, right? Long things of spaghetti, the little thin ones. You just take little bites out of it. It's crunchy. Good fun. Tea? I just put a tea bag in my mouth sometimes. <laughs> Oh. Oh, I, I don't I don't really do that. That, that would make you more British than me. <laughs> they used to do that though. That that's um because tea stains were so popular on your on your teeth back in like the 18th century. So they would just get tea and chew it and oh. put it and rub it on their teeth and stuff to try and stain their teeth so they would look rich as if they could afford tea. That was the mm. uh, the thing. Now we just wear gold chains. <laughs> all of us, yeah. <laughs> all of us. Absolutely all of us. I have gold teeth. That's uh mm. everywhere. Had mine removed. But that is the funny thing, it's like like gold teeth used to be a thing of like, oh yeah, you've got money and now it's a thing of you've had to replace your teeth. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> that, times have definitely changed with that one. I do but, feel um, like it's better though. If you got metal teeth, you can't hurt them. You can bite anything. Start biting into bones, no problem. I don't, know why you'd I don't want think to, but... they're that strong. Well, just get like, gold is not a strong. Well, that's true. It's not. It's very malleable. <laughs> but like, do you ever see those? I saw so. Oh, uh, is it a James Bond movie where the guy has like metal teeth that are like super sharp? You know that those films aren't real, right? Okay, well, there, I'm sure. Also I'm a man sure you who kills can make people it. with his hat. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, you're, you're quoting. You're like, yeah, I've seen this in this film. Like, <laughs> you know that Thor's not real, too, right? Well, well, you're gonna have some Norwegian people very annoyed with you. <laughs> the one that swings a lightning hammer, at least, <laughs> and saves the universe. You Although the know. Incredible Hulk. That's just uh, Banks That's on a bad banks. day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, we've spoken through what was the Antico round, which went relatively well for Invictus. They've built up some money and put themselves right back into this game. Now, after what was a fairly poor CT side, they do still have an opportunity in this map, that's for sure. And uh, although CT sides have definitely been the stronger of the two, I feel like if anything, Inferno might be the one exception to that rule. I, I I can't think of a particularly stellar CT side. Checkmate definitely weren't bad at times with Techno on that B site. I was a fan of that, but double AWP setup coming straight in. We've now got our fourth AWP of the bunch. It's only been NCL that hasn't like primary manned one now with Urkus pulling in the secondary. See if it works for him. Um, I'm not really the biggest fan of a double up setup on this map. I can see the uses, but going into a first buy round, I feel like that's quite risky. Normally because of the pace that teams opt to take this first buy round. As you can see, they're just running and gunning, or at least two of them are. The other three uh, decided that they were going to bait by the looks of it, because they were all just sat back waiting. 
Dobu, a little bit trigger happy, he's going to shoot at Cabal, and well, maybe it was just a, a vision of things to come, as Cabal does fall. Flying has managed to find one in the end, but the problem is they've still got to try and clear this all. Nine under pressure. He goes down and things could become a problem, as now you've got another AWP attempting a retake, and NCL with the only rifle. Well, flying at least is low HP, but no nades to take him out of, well, guess where? He's over in the mini pit, at least. A little bit different than his normal position. He's going to look to take the fight onto long as they come on around. That smoke yet to fade, though. NCL, he's managed to close in the distance towards the site. They're looking for that player, Bottle, who's just tucked away. Good shot by Urkast. He shut down right afterwards. They know where Bottle is, but NCL can't win the fight. The swing by Bottle a little bit too strong. And Invictus go up to double digits, putting it 10 to 9. And more importantly, putting Tiger on what I presume is going to be a position where they don't buy. Just go down to pistols. Because even if they full invest into rifles, they will not have utility. And on a, on a map like this, utility is so important that I would rather them have five pistols and some smokes to play with. It is always nice when you're sort of proved right when talking about okay. something. I'm, I'm very, I'm very surprised that they invested into double orbs in the first buy round. Like it, it has its uses as a surprise factor, but you know that you you haven't cleared out all of those SMGs. You know that they still have them. You're not going to play a slow pick base round with SMGs. So you've almost just played into your enemy's hands by buying the double orb setup. And it does bite them. Like you see nine in the back of the site getting rushed down by a Mac 10. That's a nightmare every Orpa will have, is you have to react quick enough, and he didn't. Now though, with the pistols, well, who knows? They might even win this one. Well, let's see if they do. The run of what what uh, what 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 what? <laughs> Everybody was blind! NCL ran through, got one shot on a head as he faded back. Tiger have got a man advantage to play with. That's possibly the craziest little play I've seen in this tournament so far. He had like three people in his horse. Excuse me? What's going on? It's all down to Destroyer. And this man is going to be a world leader by the end of this one because he has got a whole race of CTs to kill. This is going to be impossible. Not a chance. Everybody from the Tri-State area was coming in to say hello to him. Four players. No way he could take them down. Oh, my God. That round that was, was crazy. Clairvoyant returns. <laughs> <laughs> that was just insane. Oh, what? I don't know why. That's the thing that irritates me is that I don't necessarily know why I thought that they were going to somehow pull that up. Oh, my God. Buy a lottery ticket. Buy a lottery ticket. Because that is the luckiest kill I think I've ever seen. This from Dobu is fantastic, though. Just clinical shots. And while Invictus, you've got to be kicking yourselves. You win versus the double AWP setup, and then you lose versus basically nothing. Luckily, they made enough money over the last few rounds. But even still, this is a tough spot to be in. Oh. Definitely given Tiger a huge boost in economy. You can see they've retrieved three AKs, an AWP for nine, and then, okay, sure, Cabal had to buy himself, but the rest of the team have got so much extra cash that they've basically given them a safety net. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been cast out below them. At least if they do fall down, they're going to be nice and comfy. Although those things things do kind of hurt. I fell onto one before from the trapeze thing. Wasn't as, I thought it'd be like a nice comfy trampoline. No. You you learn something new every day. But for Invictus, you can see they're looking to move in towards this B side. Two man hold to lock this one down. Or cast peeking it with a smoke. Thirty five seconds left. Time to throw it out. NCL. He's got a flash in hand to catch them as they come on through. Flash going out, and it does indeed catch them. NCL's able to grab one, two on the back of it, and Urkast with his own double. That closes the round out for Tiger. Really nicely handled. NCL didn't get all the flash assists because obviously he took some of the kills himself, but 
That flashbang completely destroyed Invictus's chances. Yeah, they were they're so blind in this battle. And well, I, I think there's something that we, we sort of had to talk about is, is, again, just much better utility usage coming up from some of these teams that than we've seen so far in the tournament, or definitely seen throughout the day. And I, I think Invictus have just maybe put the final nail in their own coffin. They've done it from the inside, Mitch. Because that was the, the round prior was such a stupid round to lose. They've gone for a fast B play in a round where they didn't need to run through a smoke. They didn't need to take those sort of risks. And instead, they've just completely boosted the economy of Tiger through the roof because of it. Now we're seeing what is a, a hero AK by the looks of it for Bottle. I don't know. I, I think Invictus have some serious work to do. Yep, definitely. There is some severe work to be had and done. And when you look at Invictus, on the T side, I doubt they're going to be getting much work done themselves here, regardless of the strategy. They have just got base pistols to play off of a couple deagles and that AK-47. And really getting any access into this one's going to be difficult. But we'll see exactly what they can muster up. As What's odd about this one really is how slow they're playing it. They do have no utility. Uh, coming into the last minute of the round. And so I, I want to hey. see them try to get a little bit more of a direct approach. I also, again, want to just point out, what I said it in the previous map, when players take, especially a rifle, you get, um, so you already have your rifle in play, and you take deagles around it and no utility, I'd much rather you just invest into a PC-50 and a smoke or a Tech-9. But hey, that rifle seems to be doing the work bottle in with another... Oh my, what a lifeline for Invictus. Oh, flying, he's down to 10 HP. He went for the AWP, he got it, the bomb as well. Almost oh, falling third. on the cross back. And it looks like they're going to be able to get this in a, th in a four versus two. Oh my, look at the position for Shousage. It's so good. Look at Bal jumps. <laughs> what? Why did he jump? Oh, flying, he's not going to miss that shot lands it as they round the corner and it leaves just one man remaining Cabal looks like he's just going to try and save an AK it's come back right in return and I, I guess you just put that one down more so to crossfires like players not hitting their shots and then no one being able to trade them so Tiger have let a similar round slip obviously Bottle hit some nutty shots as he was running around so that's obviously going to help him quite a bit and I think this is one of the maps, as I said, I remember all the way back to like 2017 where he played against the Renegades, which is obviously now 100 Thieves, and dropped like, I think it was like 35 kills. Like he has it in him to have these crazy games, and he's having one right now, so the team are trying to set him up with it. 22 to 18. I believe that's the, the top in the entire server. But this was just clinical. Every shot he took, at least the first two for sure. We didn't see the third one, but I... I'm going to assume it was just as crisp. It was. Well, there's not much you can do about that. And they've gone back to the double orb. I wasn't a fan of this the first time. We'll see if it works better for them the second time. I don't expect to see the T's just running out onto the A site again. So maybe it'll work a little bit better for them. But this is a map where there are definitely positions for a double orb. But retakes with it are now impossible. They're very closed off site. Angles clearing can be very difficult indeed. So... You cannot allow a bomb plant if you're playing this strategy. Got to be hitting those shots straight off the bat. And making them really fight for the map control. And you can see for now, at least Tiger have managed to push them out of banana, maintaining the control that they found so easily on their T side time after time. The smoke down on long pulls nine off the angle. As he comes back to support the site, he has still got the ability to hold the long control. And for Invictus, I don't really know what they're looking for. A minute on the clock. Surely this wasn't meant as a fake, that smoke on long. It, it did basically nothing for them. The control that they have now is negligible at best. Just the fact that they're holding the corner without having to risk walking into an off, I guess. 36 seconds, Molly down on long and stops any form of split into CT. Shot by Urkast, not connecting. He's pulled back. He has no utility. 
His teammate up above NCL in the same boat. But he's above the smoke. And Tom, how many times have we seen this angle left unchecked? NCL, the one that could get some serious damage done, but they check hey. it. They come in pre-firing. But Urka still gets one through the smoke. Tagged to flying and so close to the kill. Gets a headshot onto himself as well, actually. So he's out of there. And a four versus three retake. With Urka slipped down to two HP and double ops as well. Hmm. Well, this is what I mentioned at the beginning of the round, is if you play this setup, you can't allow the bomb to go down. That is pretty much a necessity. Now, they're going to use the utility. Dobu, he's going to have a task here. Needs the kill. The flashbang actually going to go past, and Viva holding the angle already. That's both rifles down. Another orc to fall. And, well, there you go. I told you so. Well, Tom, for Tiger, maybe they need to get you on that roster. Give you some uh, insight. Or give, you can give them some insight. We've got Dinko, who's going to work his magic on Wang. And then you coming in to help out the Tiger lineup. Now we just need to find Bla at home. I reckon get him on Tai Lu. I want to see him lose all that hair. I know he'd be making the most money. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, but it comes at, it comes at a different price, Tom. I oh, know. Wait, wait. So who's Dinko on? He's on after. No, he's he's with Wang. Okay, may, may, yeah. maybe. Okay. I'm sure there's I'm sure there's a home for Blair somewhere. Good start though from the CT side. It's going to be Urkus manning that AWP. They've gone straight back in for the double orps. Didn't work too well for them in the last round, but not giving it up just yet. It has, however, taken away a lot of their finances and shifted their focus away from utility as well. Which, uh, if there's a map that I wouldn't suggest doing that on, it is Inferno. The smoke's, however, going to be wasting a fair amount of time for the T's. Without much map control whatsoever... I'm starting to feel a little bit worried for Invictus. It's been a back and forth so far, and they could desperately use the streak together. They win this round, and while the, the path is almost a yellow brick road straight towards the victory, that's a good start. Flying is going to get rid of nine. There's Orp. He's actually on the other side of the map. It's already going to be one down. Nice shots from Cabal. It's a whiff shot from Xiao Sage. And that's enough for the round to be closed. Definitely got a little bit uncomfortable when Flying hit that initial shot. It doesn't matter too much, and scoreline's going to be equalized once again. It seems like neither team can break the deadlock just yet. And for the T's, well, they're still in a position where they can buy. This whole series has felt like this. It's been a back-and-forth affair. No team is, as you were saying earlier, Tom, no team has ever really felt like they were comfortably in the lead in a position that they would be able to close it out with the exception of Tiger in that first half uh, of the first map, which, you know, we all know how that went. Not, not quite according to plan. They're about to make a play through the smoke. There's a few players gathered up within it. Looks like they're going to wait for it to fade, but the last time they attempted this, another one fell just moments later. It's not going to happen this time. The Molotov goes down instead, but two players run through, three players don't. And it's all too easy for Cabal. Disjointed is the only word we can use for Invictus in this round. And now they have been met with a second smoke. This round is already a failure, with Destroyer also falling elsewhere. And while Urkus may be forced off the angle, but it's looking like instead of Invictus... Getting that yellow brick road, it might be instead the side of Tiger as the money is racked for Invictus and they've only got two players standing with 45 seconds left. It's time to make a move and I think it's pretty obvious where they're going. The steps are being heard as the rush into B commences with the the meander. Just kind of walking in, but hey, it's working. The Sonder has given them at least two opening kills, but Viva falls afterwards. Leaving Shao Sage to retreat. And as he falls back, what a shot to Cabal. 20 seconds. He's thinking about it. He's contemplating. He's got to go fast. Bombs down the open. That flash, I think, has sealed the fate of the round. He's not going to commit to this any further. 
and instead is running away. Hey, Tom, I love this man's knife. I love his gloves. I love how it's all color schemed. Look at that op, though. It's so damn beautiful. I love that again, Chess Saga. Come on. No. Come on. No. The op. The op. Come on. Just chill. No, it's a bomb. You're almost there. It's so beautiful. It's a real... Because it's got a Celtic pattern on it as well. That's, that's what I love about it. It's decent. Oh, I'm a, I'm a fan of the Medusa. I think that'll make a good combo with all the gloves and the knife as well. Yeah, it's also significantly cheaper. Yeah, that's true. But still not cheap enough that I am willing to purchase it. <laughs> Dingo, Dingo knows. Dingo, how much is that up again? It's something like five grand, isn't it? What? Yeah, it's like 5,000 euro, I'm pretty sure. Something ridiculous. I can't even remember the name of it. Oh, what, you mean the... Not the juice of the gun deer or whatever. The gun deer, yeah, gun gun deer, gun deer. I think it's actually a um a Norse thing, but but it's Why would very he similar know? to the Celtic. He got one. <laughs> no, no, I, I just remember saying before I was like, "Wow, I love that. That's a real like Celtic Norse design." Oh, I might look into getting one of those. Then Dingo was like, "That's five grand." I was like, "No, you know what? I'm actually good." <laughs> Oh, it's the solo orb for Xiao Sage. We'll see if his pretty color scheme is enough to get him through the round. He's going to go running up banana. Um, okay, now he gets a kill, but he loses the orb. Now, it looks like they're actually going to be able to retrieve that. So I guess that was worth it, but dear Lord, that was a an insane attempt at a play. I don't even know what he expected to happen there. Because if, if they're facing that far forward, surely they're going to kill you anyway. Now, luckily, it being a, a glass cannon orb, it means that somebody else can just pick it up. It's not really an issue. They don't need like, the extra Kevlar. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot to jump. <laughs> One way to do it. Uh... <laughs> Caught me off guard. Still a little thing sometimes. A little rotate coming towards the A site. Flash around long. They start to realize there's players on their way here. Urkast has got his op trained in on this angle. He's holding a tight one. And there you go. Free kill. As destroyer's been spotted. Now he swings that little bit wider. Coming around the pole. Looking to catch Bottle as... Oh no. Bottle's walked into it. He's given the bomb away. They've got the site, but even at that, they haven't dealt with Cabal. They haven't got the bomb. And this round should be done and dusted, even in a 1v2. Flying. Uh, saving isn't even really that plausible at this point. Is it? He goes right into Urkaz. Because if he saves on the site, they'll probably hunt him down after time. And obviously, he couldn't plant the bomb because it was in the open. So there, there wasn't really anything he could do there except die. Which is a bit grim. Hmm. The worry as well is like the money for the T side is still not recovered from the last few rounds. So they're going to have a Mac 10, maybe an AK with no utility. In fact, no, V was actually going to go for a, a Tech 9 instead. Could have bought a Mac 10 as backup, but maybe wanting to save a little bit of extra money for a potential AWP. Although if they lose this round, they have to win the next one. So. I'm not sure what he's saving for. A rainy day that may never come. They've got to hope that they can get this one through. Again, it's going to be a challenge for Banana. Shiasage seems like a bit of a broken record at this point, but he gets Arcus through the smoke with a Mac 10. You got to feel a little bit hard done by on that one, and that could potentially be an AWP a little bit earlier than expected. The amount of flashes that have just been thrown over on B, it's kept Invictus from going through those smokes. And they've made the right call. Moving back over towards the A site where it is a little bit weaker, but they've left Shasage here alongside Viva. He's further back with a smoke and a molly. I think they're faking A. And this is a perfect rotate. I, I thought, even looking at the map, I thought that they were going to go to the A site. That this was just a hard sell of a fake in towards B that we'd see the smoke come over from Viva and a push after. That's exactly what Tiger think as well. Obviously, they're not privy to the same things that we are. There's no zoner on their team. So they don't know that this T side is full rotated up banana. And as the smoke goes down in CT, it's going to be the easiest B take of their lives.
Three and a half thousand, by the way, Tom. The, the gun near. Thinko says. Bit too steep for me, to be honest. Yeah, maybe if I win the lottery that I don't play, then uh, start I'll actually hitting off shots. Yeah, that that'll be the difference maker. The thing is, I feel like I'm more likely to whiff shots because I'll be too busy inspecting my own skin. <laughs> and wondering why did I pay three and a half grand for this? The fu the funny thing is though, I I, I keep doing this. I, I look at how much like the the stickers on my AK yeah. are going up to, and that's the real kicker because that's starting to like it's getting to the point where the stickers on that might end up being worth more than that gun. Yeah, well, I, I have a, an AK cartel with really expensive stickers on it, so that gun's worth about two quid. The stickers are worth well, about my, 50. Mine's on, a I think, a red line. No, it's not too bad, then. There's nothing it looks worse than... very nice, but, like... You see people just... with, like, howls and titan hollows and stuff, and you're just like, why have you done that? <laughs> you be kicking yourself. Oh, that was a jumping shot onto NCL. He even headshot him and then finished him off. The beauty of the MAC-10, I suppose, inside of Molotov. Inferno living up to its name. As Tiger lose the one-for-one -one trade, and it's even worse because it was an SMG that managed to find it, right? Now they're up against the rifles. This is where the real damage can come in. Invictus heavily pushed into this A site, but they have also got full banana control over on the CT side, so rotates have come in. Dobu's in position. He's going to catch the first off, but it's so easy to trade him out in that position once you've got the site. A, a simple swing. And there's not many places he can go. It's a very tight angle. Oh, it's looking like the full 30 might be here, unless Urkus has something to say about it. Viva, you can see the temptation to try and hold the angle there, but instead, a slightly deeper one. I don't know if Urkus has spotted anything here. Desperately trying to find that second player, and Viva decides to peek. I think he's spotted him out. The information's been gathered, been garnered up, but it might not be enough time left on the clock. 12 seconds and ticking. That rifle save might just be worth right. He's going to go for the kill instead onto Cabal and uh, the last man. He may even die at the back of the site. He should have just enough HP that he'll be okay. Yeah, nine. <laughs> that was very close. Why? Why? Well, I can't answer that. I don't know why the hell you would just swing out in that position. Donut. That was silly. Absolutely silly. Look at the impact on their economy, Tom. After they fully invest back up, if they buy another op, they actually wouldn't have enough money uh, for the next round to comfortably buy. They're on round one loss bonus as well, right? So they're only getting their 1400 so that would be, uh, that, the loss of that rifle, the swing there, could actually cost them. Luckily, though, they're finding the opening duel at least. And they're well, only they're versus the pistols. As well. Yeah, yeah maybe, so they, they, they get lucky by the fact that their opponent's economy is worse. I quite like that we see Tiger mainly just invest into utility here. Uh, they had the one rifle on Urkas who tried to make the hero play. Ends up being caught. And Viva wanted to pad the stats, but he's actually going to be caught out by nine. That's a second rifle they can now save. Uh, not completely necessary, but you know what? That seemed to be uh, Viva's style, I guess you could say. Don't mess with his style. I have to say, the Invictus, uh, I wouldn't call them hoodies. Zip-ups. I don't know. What do you call a hoodie without a hood? Jumper? I guess. Yeah, jump over, pull over. It's a zip-up as well, though. Yeah. So it's not a pull-over. Pull-on? I don't know. But they look, they look damn cool. Zippy-up. <laughs> <laughs> a zip-rupper. Yeah, these two oh, rifles tiger. saved. It's all Tiger needs. It's all they want. Bottle. Is he gonna hunt? Is he gonna swing wide? He could, he could be getting dropped. Can they stop dying to like stuff that they don't need to die to? <laughs> Flying just died to the bomb. It doesn't matter to their economy, but it's still, it's still just completely unnecessary. 
they can't drop a... Oh, they can drop an orb over. Never mind. Bottle had enough, so he can drop one over. So they will have that for what is the final round of regulation. It wouldn't be overly surprising if this went to overtime with how back and forth this match has been. Tiger desperately in need of a round. I would say, if anything, they probably earned this victory, but the resilience of Invictus seems to come kicking back exactly when they need it. Both teams looking out of this game at multiple points. Both economies been on the brink for different times, but we've come into the last round of the match with both teams able to purchase, well, I'd say almost fully. We know how much the CTs have enjoyed a double orb setup, but it won't be here this time. Destroyer. Desperately looking to try and find some sort of opening into the apartments. Actually going to be a short stack. Now, a well-placed Molotov here will ruin the day of this CT side. It will put both of them in an awkward position, but anything else, and this could be a pretty tough take for them. This Molotov's so common. I, please, just land it in the corner. <laughs> they're going to go wide peek it instead, and instead, they're losing their lives. A man playing anti-flash was enough to net the first kill, but instead, they're going to barrel into the B site. Both players from the same corner. Might be a surprise. They're going to check for it, though. Jao Sargis found the opener. There's no smoke down on this cross, however. The bomb is going to be planted. Kabao. Waiting patiently for his teammates to arrive. Viva actually going to get a bit more aggressive in towards the ruins instead. Just try and hold off these players as they try and make a push back in. He hits the shot, nails the first man, and instantly tries to switch his position. The Molotov is also going to deny them a little bit longer, but Viva this time, he's not missing. We've seen many mistakes from him throughout this series, but he might have just closed it. It's left on to Dobu. He's not in a bad game. That's a decent first kill. They don't need to peek, but Viva, he closes it in style. It will be a 16-14 for Invictus. It will be four kills for him in the final round, and they have scraped themselves through another victory. We've seen them come close in pretty much every...